so thank you so much for speaking with us today. I had come across your TikTok video that really struck a chord with so many with respect to healthy boundaries at work, especially when taking PTO. I guess what inspired you to make that video? Well, Meyer, it was really a lifetime of doing this wrong, you know, mm. kind of like squirreling away my time off for some rainy day in the future rather than taking care of myself, you know, throughout the year and taking little pockets of time off. So uh, it was really from my own painful lessons learned and dealing with burnout, frankly, from management consulting and corporate work that made me want to make that video. I also noticed looking around that we Americans in particular, we tend to take vacation kind of like a, a painkiller. You know, I, I grinded and I grinded and I ground myself to dust and now I've earned a vacation. And I think that's interesting because my hope is to encourage people to take it a little more like a vitamin, mm. you know, like something right. that fortifies you, uh, keeps you strong, prevents things like burnout from coming. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I guess that kind of drives into this whole, I guess, hustle culture that exists within a lot of institutions that they're really, it's almost like management is being encouraged to create this culture to make it seem like there's a shame behind taking time off for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, I, yeah. I guess, why do you feel like what, what really, I mean, do they not see how this impacts people uh, on a regular basis? What do you feel about that? Yeah, I think that we still commonly reward FaceTime, you know, time spent in the office. Right. You know, whoever comes earliest and leaves latest must, you know, we equate that to dedication or hard work or even results um, wrongly, I think, because so much of the data points in the other direction that people who take breaks, People who take time off and vacations, you know, tend to come back and be sharper, more productive, have better morale. So I think it's this leftover uh, stigma that's still around uh, around taking time off. And, and you see it in small ways, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, so-and-so is taking another personal day? What's up with that? You know, we, mm. we, we hear those things, they become normal to us, or we hear maybe a manager make a comment like that. Um, so and so is on vacation again. And, you know, we, pr we pick up a on a lot of those clues as employees, and we tend to fashion ourselves, right, to, um, you know, be that shinier, hardworking employee and to take less. You know, so I think it's all part of our hustle culture, this idea that's left over and antiquated, frankly, um, you know, that the early bird wins, that the late the late staying employee is really the most dedicated or hardest worker. Um, that's not true. And it disadvantages plenty of people who don't have that luxury, yeah. you know, who have uh, dependents that they care for and can't stay till 7 p.m. even if they wanted to. Right. Yeah. And I guess, I guess, how does, I guess, and you really talk a lot about this in a lot of your videos. How would you suggest someone to try to set these healthy boundaries with, within an employment setting where there is this hustle culture? What would you say mm -hmm. to somebody that was in that predicament? Well, here's a truth bomb that made my head explode as somebody who's learning this and frankly continuing to practice um, and, you know, look at healthy boundaries and make them real. And so one is to really constantly realize you are training other people how to see you, how to treat you, including your time, your health, your mental health. Nobody is going to value that like you will. Nobody is going to value that like you will. So, for example, only 40% of Americans take all their vacation time wow. compared to 90% of the French, mm. just as a little comparison. You know, one of the things you can do is get really good at training your manager. I'm going to totally disconnect. 
next week when I'm mm. off. I look forward to checking back in with you on Monday, the you know, 24th when I'm back in the office, but I'll be totally off the grid. Right. Training people to think about your personal days, your time off, uh, maybe even a sick day. You know, I'll see you tomorrow and I'll check back in in the morning. Um, so they really understand that you're not, they're, you're not giving an all access pass to yourself. That right. is so important. And, and maybe you didn't give that all access pass, but somebody's still doing it to you. Right. You know, they're calling you constantly on a day off and it's, it's really encroaching on your boundaries. It's really important to broach it. Yeah. You know, you can even, yeah. No, I was just going to say that I, you know, I remember I just saw this recent video that you had posted about um, an article that you had, uh, I guess, seen about a manager and how that manager had, uh, in essence, um, celebrated the employee that had said that they didn't respond on the weekend, that they were going to, that they Mm -hmm. didn't. They didn't really look into this crisis, and they waited until Monday after their weekend. And I thought that that was such a important aspect of really celebrating managers that really do the right thing to make sure that people's time is respected and valued. So I think that that makes total sense. That you know, there's a lot of need for training um, within the culture, the management, to really cater to more, you know, more value for people and their time um, rather than just the employer's time. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I thought that video that you made was, was phenomenal. Um, what are your thoughts on, oh, thank you. I guess, employers? What are your thoughts on um, employers who offer unlimited PTO? You know, I say proceed with caution <laughs> all around. <laughs> um, you know, if there were ever uh, something ambiguous, it's unlimited paid time off. And I say that because often when you query leaders who offer a limited paid time off, you say, is there a preferred amount of PTO you'd like people to take? They'll say yes. Many of them have a number in mind, you know, whether that's three weeks or maybe two weeks or four weeks at a particular place. Well, that's a problem right there, you know, to give people a kind of gray um, metric uh, and then be frustrated, let's say, if they don't take the right amount of time off. So I think that's a problem in and of itself is it's just rife with misunderstandings. The right. other thing is uh, what we know from research is people who have unlimited paid time off tend to take fewer vacation days than people who have a stated number of days. So my best advice is, you know, it's better to give people a generous number of stated days off than to give them unlimited because they're going to take less. And the one other, uh, you know, tripwire that comes with unlimited PTO is there's no payout. You know, so unlike other forms of vacation where you can cash out uh, mm. at the end of a year, let's say, and cash out what you didn't use, you can't do that with unlimited PTO. It's kind of an invisible faux benefit in that way right. with no tangible value. So that's important to know um, if for some reason you need to quit unexpectedly or you're relying on that money. Yeah. I wanted to talk a little bit about these new workplace trends that are occurring. Um, there's things in the mainstream about quiet quitting. Um, there's mm-hmm. one about quiet firing. And now there's this new one called quick quitting. Um, and so with respect to quiet quieting, you actually made a video that talks about how that there's a crisis of trust and that to some extent that's leading to quiet quitting amongst employees. Can you expand a little yeah. bit on that? Yes, I'm a big believer. Trust is kind of the cornerstone that makes us want to show up at work, that that gives us that feeling that we're in a mutual two-way relationship. You know, you're here for me if something happens in a similar way, I'm here for you. And look, I think a big part of work historically has relied on employees going above and beyond their job yep. descriptions, right? you know, whether that's staying late or can you come in over the weekend in a pinch or, 
um, just doing more beyond what's in your job description, what you agreed to and contracted around initially. And I think employees more and more are saying, if I can't trust you to go ab above and beyond for me, why should I go above and beyond what's been agreed to for you? So part of that video was expressing 64% of employees today would trust a robot more than they trust their own manager. Wow. That sounds like a crisis of trust to me. Yeah, yeah for and, sure. You know, I think uh, it, it's just like any relationship that, that, that we're part of, right? Whether it's a good partnership, mm -hmm. marriage, anything, it relies on clear, truthful expectations communicating really clear, honest expectations with each other. And I think that's been lacking woefully in the workplace. Um, I think it's the ultimate form of respect to be honest and ask people to deliver on that statement of work, otherwise known as a job description, and not have it um, have double meanings mm. or need to be decoded you know, but real talk. And so I hope to see some of that plain speak enter more of the employer employee contract so that it is clear. Right. No, absolutely. That makes certain total sense. You know, you're known to be somebody that is an advocate for workplace, um, for people to speak up for themselves. Uh, what would you suggest for people that are struggling to truly advocate for themselves within the work to how to really nurture that confidence to speak up for themselves? Well, you're so not alone in that. Um, a lot of us, you know, need to summon the courage to go and ask for what we need. So I think one of the first things to do is an inside job, which is legitimize your need. Hmm. Affirm your need. It doesn't matter if it's flexible work you're asking for, a flexible work arrangement, a raise, career advancement, legitimize that. Um, I'd say after that, tally up your value. You know, this mm. is the time to audit the value you bring so that you can speak about it fluently. The efficiencies you've created, you know, the revenue you brought in, the repeat business you booked, whatever it may be, you create value. You have to be the world's foremost authority on what that is. Um, and I think another one that kind of goes with that is walk in, carry yourself on an equal plane mm. with that other person. It's so important, even if it is an authority you're asking for a raise. Um, conduct that conversation like we both have needs. You're not up here and I'm down here. Right. Um, you know, we can speak peer to peer about this issue and come up with a solution. So I think that's so important. I think right. when you um, rebalance the power dynamics in the room, you claim some of your power. Right. Uh, that shows. I think it comes through in your words, in your conviction. Yeah, I, I really like that. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, really doing that inside work to really understand the value that you're bringing to the table and being able to assert that in a professional manner to people that may be perhaps in a higher position in the hierarchy, but from the perspective of needs, uh, there's everybody has needs. And just being able to communicate that in a professional manner can certainly, certainly make people advocate more effectively for themselves. So that certainly does make sense. I guess I'll, I'll ask you this last question. What do you think are the signs of a healthy, happy workplace? I think they're different than maybe how I would have answered you five years ago. That's for sure. For sure. Um, you know, I think they have options when it comes to remote work. Mm. I think there's a respect for the fact that remote work uh, is, is part of the times we're living in and really important for making certain people's lives work mm. and function. So I think that's one important part. More culturally speaking, I think in some of the healthiest workplaces I see with clients, people can hazard a guess. They can talk about a mistake they made or how their thinking has evolved. Mm. Um, 
people disagree in meetings, mm. you know, in a respectful yeah. way, right. healthy right. disagreement. Sure. Um, and I think there's shared airtime as well. You see people sharing the mic. It's not a uh, meetings full of over talkers who dominate, you know, but a mm. sense that we are smarter when we hear from everyone at the table. And there's one more, Meyer, I want to say, I, I find it gets a lot less in t attention, but it's important. And it, I think in the best workplaces, there's a diverse mix of hero stories. Mm. You know, every workplace has hero stories about somebody who did an awesome thing, someone who's a legend because of an amazing thing they pulled off. Right. But so often in the past, that's been the person who grinded and pulled an all-nighter um, or flew to Chicago and spent the entire weekend, you know, doing a turnaround for a satellite office. And I think we need to change those hero stories. You know, I'd like to see somebody yeah. who's not the old mold of uh, staying at work the longest or showing up with the most face time, um, but someone who has boundaries. How about celebrating that person? You know, speaking about a leader yeah. who leaves loudly at 5 p.m. every day and doesn't apologize for it, um, mm -hmm. but who has the following and respect of their people. So I think that that's really important to look at your hero stories, make sure they're not celebrating an old, outdated uh, vision of a great employee. Well, thank you so much, uh Selena, this has been amazing. I've learned so much from you. I appreciate all your videos and all the content that you put on, all the work that you're doing. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for creating this forum and for having me.